I grew up in India and I came to Oxford to do a DPhil, after which I started research on circadian rhythms, where my research interest was trying to understand how this 24-hour clock knows what the time is. So how does it pick up light cues from the world and how does it use this information to then set itself to the right time? Now I have my own lab here at Oxford where we study the molecular architecture of the circadian clock and how the clock and sleep systems are regulated. The circadian clock is present in all life, so whether you're dealing with bacteria or humans, we're dealing with such a fundamental piece of biology that regulates almost all aspects of life. But in terms of neuroscience and the brain, it's this molecular system that is embedded in the genes, but then regulates behavior. So it's a really neat system with which to study that relationship about how the environment affects genes, which then regulate behavior. What we've been working on is trying to understand how light tells the clock what the time is. And since the clock is molecular, what this needs is for light information to go from the eye to particular cells in the brain and in those cells to switch genes on and off. Now the clock is housed in a really small nucleus in the brain, it's, but I think technology has now reached a point where this was a huge barrier in the past and it no longer is. So what we're doing is unpicking and really fine detail exactly how the environment regulates genes in these small cells and then trying to understand how that then cascades through the rest of the brain to tell a mouse or a human being when to sleep, when to eat. For what we do, I think it's one of the best centres in the world, probably the only centre in the UK that specialises in studying sleep and circadian rhythms, but bringing together scientists that cover the whole spectrum. So from people who work on cells like I do, but through to um, people who work with patients in the clinic or deliver behavioural therapy to patients to help them to sleep better. So really covering that whole spectrum and we're all talking to each other, we're all working together every day. So for a young researcher getting into circadian rhythm research these days, I would say the field's at a very exciting place because it's moved from the discovery stage, which is where we were trying to understand what the clock was, to the stage where it's being applied in the field because the clock is so important and regulates so many aspects of physiology. We now understand that the clock really underpins almost all aspects of our health and function. So no matter which field you do research in, in the end, the clock will feature and good sleep features as something that needs to be underpinned. And the second thing I would say is until now, sleep has remained quite a mystery. Why we sleep, what actually happens in the brain when we sleep. To an extent, I would say sleep is still really that final frontier in neuroscience where we know so little about what really happens in the brain at that time. And only now we really have the tools at hand to be able to unpick this. So I think it's a very exciting place in research to be at the moment. I am hoping the future of the field is where the sleep and circadian communities are not only connected with one another but where we're connected with broader studies in physiology in general. So where we study how the interplay between clocks and sleep and say immunology or oncology, uh, metabolism. So all of these spaces where we're trying to understand how brain health is really regulating whole body function is where the field is headed and I think again that's a very exciting place for the field to go. I think basic research is incredibly important to fund well because it's only out of basic science that you get these exciting discoveries that then build on to some sort of clinical application. So trying to understand what really happens in the brain uh, as we cycle through a 24-hour rhythm and as we cycle through our sleep-wake cycles is probably the most important thing to be funded at the moment. So what is really happening in the brain when we sleep? I think that is a question that needs a blank check.